Hello and welcome back and that is right today we want to return to the subject of Plex Media Server and the now two and a half years old DS920 Plus. This NAS has been through the wars with us and indeed we have talked about Plex and this NAS several times but today's video is going to be slightly different and with a twist it is something you guys have demanded for a while. Now in the past, we have looked at how Plex performs on this particular NAS. Indeed, we've done individual videos, we've done remote access videos, we even did some fixes that you can apply to take a, a advantage of the hardware on board a great deal better. But there's one thing that you guys have raged time and time and again, and that is that in my previous videos from well over two years ago, I didn't amply cover the subject of 4K, and that is right. Back when I started the Plex Media Server tests back in 2019, although 4K was definitely around, um, its kind of application and usability amongst a lot of users were no, was nowhere near as widespread as it is now. And although I did include a 4K tier in the majority of my testing, what you found when I did my tests was that my 4K media tests were by no means kind of atypical of most users indeed i was looking at multimedia that was far 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 too dense there for specific 4k users i gave a lot more focus to 1080p than anything now of course in 2022 moving into 2023 4k is a bigger deal so this video is purely about 4k but not just any old 4k i'm going for 4k that is a great deal more accessible this i've gone for 11 different files in my 4k multimedia test and this kind of are indicative these are indicative of files that you would find in most 4k releases i've not gone for the kind of mega two or 400 megabits per second files i think the largest we're going to be looking at today is 80 megabits per second there now these 11 files that we're going to be going through here unlike the jellyfish files that i've tested before are different things they are either 4k uh, multimedia files that have been used for bench testing new uh, 4k uhd tvs or they are trailers for movies that are coming up that are in 4k and we'll be going through the video uh, compression techniques and codecs and qualities as we go through the testing there i'm obviously going to mute as well because the youtube bops <clears throat> will probably hate me in terms of um you know copyright ownership of these trailers but hell let's continue anyway so again for those that aren't aware we're running on a quad core celeron j4125 it's a quad core processor and we've got um inside um we're actually running on six gig of memory we've got a two gig upgrade there but don't worry memory plays very little part in what we're doing today the thing we want to look at is the cpu the other thing i'll highlight is we are going to be accessing this over the local area network but again most people that are talking about 4k right now unless they want to introduce 4k which we have enabled thanks to a plex pass and using hardware transcoding most people want to know about 4k performance locally there so let's bring that dashboard back up and crack on with our tests so again we've got the files here and the files do vary in size it should be said crack on there going to our 4k test files there we will be retesting some of the NASs that we've looked at in the past as we go but again, the largest file we've got there is that one at the bottom, which is the 80 megabits per second there. And that's the trailer for Top Gun Maverick in 4K, which is an 8.265 file. Again, if you want to learn more about the difference between H.265 and HEVC or H.265 there and the difference 10-bit and 8-bit HDR, watch the other videos. Just, again, a simple Google right there. Boom. This should be linked in the description, which should give you all that information you need. But let's crack straight on. Test number one is into the cave. Let's bring uh, the list up. It's a little easier for you guys to see there. That is our first file into the cave. It's 4K there, H.264 file, so it's going to play native. 12 megabits per second. It's You can ignore the frames per second here. It's not going to be too important. And it's an MP4 file there. So let's play that there on screen. And again, boom, it played straight away. We can go to the bottom there. We're still running on the 12 megabits per second. It's uh, 4K there. And we can zoom out. And it's playing just fine. We're seeing the bumps down on the CPU at the bottom. Nothing too crazy. If we go to the bottom, we can see that the buffering, the dark orange there, is staying ahead of playback. And again, 
quite pleased with what we're seeing so far and what we'll do is we'll just skip forward a little bit just to see that the system is able to stay on top of what we're doing there and we're seeing things absolutely fine there no problems whatsoever in terms of video playback we're not going to include any kind of transcoding in this video as mentioned but again i'd say that file absolute success tiny little bump there in terms of cpu utilization but nothing really to worry about there so now we're going to go for our second uh, test file here this is roast duck um, this is kind of a cookery type thing and again very similar to the previous file there eight um, bit but it's a 60 megabits per second frame rate there so a big jump from the 12 that we've just had there so let's play that and again this is an h.265 this time so it, the system is being forced to convert this file on the fly but as it's not like those giant files that we've tested previously, it's going through absolutely fine. It's only a 42 second file, so we're not going to do any skipping ahead there. But as you can see, crystal clear, that's 60 um, uh, megabits per second there. You can really tell that in the sharpness of that frame rate. We did see a small bump there in terms of CPU utilization, but nothing too crazy there. We've seen that the buffering there in the background, absolutely fine. Again, 100% success there. Next file is another test file. This is Beauty of Taiwan, a three minute file. And again, this is a, uh, they say 29 megabits per second, just call it 30 megabits per second, 8 MKV uh, file there. And it's an HEVC file running at a similar um, density there, 4K UHD file as the one we just saw. So we'll bring that up there at the bottom. Obviously, it's going to convert automatically. Again, do check out the other videos that I've mentioned before, but if you don't know, most devices do not play H.265 or HEVC natively due to the patent behind that being shared and very complex. Consequently, if you do run H.264 media, it runs natively. It will run exactly as it is. But HEVC will always need to be converted there. But again, we're seeing that slight rise in CPU and that GPU utilization there as we're using the embedded graphics of that Intel. And the uh, full encoding isn't completely uh, ahead of playback in its entirety. But still, nonetheless, this is running absolutely fine. And I'll be honest, I've watched this video about four or five times and it always massively makes me miss Taiwan. Um, I've only been there twice and I still think about it, I'd say at least once a week. But again, the file's running fine, no drop in frame rate, no drop in anything at all. I'd say this is an absolute success. And again, we can skip forward if we choose just to the different areas. And we're seeing a slight delay as we skip ahead, but you're going to get that with this kind of denser file there. But again, CPU utilization, very uh, moderate there. Now we're going to make our way into the movie trailers. Now all of these come from multiple sources that are linked to the description, but predominantly these are made, of course, by the movie makers. And a lot of these high density trailers are released way before the movies, or in some cases afterwards in line with Blu-ray. So do bear in mind that some of these are going to be a higher quality than ones that are available to buy right now. But for now, we're going to go with Wonder Woman there, 4K, and again, this is an 8-bit file, a 264, so no native uh, changes needed. We can go ahead and play that trailer there. Again, you can see it's that 16 megabits per second bit right there. It's one of the kind of mid 4K uh, densities there. You're going to see a lot of that as you go through. But again, CPU utilization, we saw the spike, but again, chunkier than what we saw before because it is one of the middling uh, uh, resolutions but still it's managed to settle itself down quite neatly to a nice easy playback there and we're seeing no problems playing that in its original native uh, native format again i'm not going to do any transcoding in this video i've already covered transcoding a great deal in the other videos and a lot of you just want to know what native 4k network playback is going to be but for now I think that's an absolute success for us there. So now we're going to go with the Dune trailer. It's an Ultra HD 4K, again, set up there. It's H.265 or HEVC, 10 bit HDR, 16 megabits per second bit rate. So go ahead and play that file there. It's going to convert, obviously, because it's the HEVC file. We're seeing denser audio streams on these larger files as well. I may have to work on some files uh, videos soon with regards to denser audio playback coming up very very soon but we're not seeing too much to worry about here not dissimilar to what you've already seen um, from that Wonder Woman trailer there but very low impact there on the CPU GPU utilization there again memory not an issue as mentioned in the introduction 
but things are running absolutely fine. And if we skip forward there, make our way to later in the video, it's gonna be that slight delay as it catches up. We're probably gonna see that CPU spike because these are denser files that we are dealing with here that it's having to switch in between the stream for. But ultimately, absolutely fine for us there. And I'm going to call that, again, a solid success. Next, we'll make our way into Spider-Man No Way Home, an IMAX 4K UHD trailer, 8-bit, 32 megabits per um, second bit right there, and it's an MKV file. So let's bring that up on there. Again, playing in the original quality there, so as it's an H.264, we don't have to worry too much about that, so it should uh, play quite well. But that spike we're seeing there at the beginning is despite this being played natively, it is still a larger density. That 4.8 megabits per second or 36 overall uh, at the translation of bitrate, again, that is where we're going to start to see a bit of the weightiness kick in. And that was one of the main complaints about my previous 4K testing, that when we were testing 4K, we were only testing the very, very, very high end of the multimedia. This is where we're looking at 4K that's far more accessible to most users. And once again, if we skip forward, there should be a slight spike there on CPU, but playback still seemingly seems absolutely fine there. We're going to see how that spike pans itself out. It should settle itself down in just a moment on the right-hand side of the screen. And again, if we zoom in there, not too much. We barely broke. Now, we just pipped just under 20% utilization there. So next up, Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker. It actually annoys me that I'm including this, but I'm including it because it is a very good example of a trailer. It's just not a very good film. Um, it's a 4K trailer. Again, one of the middling 4K resolutions there, H.264. It's an 8-bit 32. It's an 8-bit um, file at 32 megabits per second uh, bit right there. So let's go ahead and play this MKV file. Again, playing in the original, um, uh, playing natively. It's going to let it play out. We're seeing that spike because of that higher bit rate there. Again, as mentioned, this was the big problem with my previous 4K testing when I was only looking at the highest of the high. But again, absolutely fine. We're seeing that playing straight through. Again, there'll be the slight delay as I skip forward. But overall, terrible film, but it is playing back very well. So... Again, we'll go to our next trailer. This is Batman, uh, or The Batman, a 4K trailer. Another H.264 file, 8 bit, 32 megabits per second MKV, much like the Star Wars one. So I expect very similar results overall compared with that. Let's have a look there. You'll probably hear the fans on my laptop there starting to kick up a little bit. Again, don't worry about the utilization of hardware in my laptop, although CPU utilization because of the OBS recording and more and the integrated graphics. We're still not reaching any cap on my recording hardware. Still, nonetheless, we're playing that trailer. We're seeing that there. We're seeing that spike because of that 32 megabits per second bit rate. But overall, absolutely fine there. And again, the we're seeing that encoding not completely staying ahead because of the weight of the file. But this DS920 is still doing a great job of staying on top of things. And I'm going to call that a solid success. We're down to our last three files here, and again, we're on to our last 32 megabits per second file there. This is Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, a 4K Ultra HD file, and it's another HEVC. So this is our first HEVC and 32 megabits per second weighted file, and it's a 10-bit HDR. So we should see a bit of a spike there on the CPU utilization. We're seeing the encoding take place down there, and again, this is like 2 minutes, 2 minutes 16 from what we can see on the bottom of bottom for that there but the utilization is actually not as impactful as i thought it was going to be indeed if we look at what it's translated to it's but it's downgraded it to 54 uh, sorry upgraded it to 54 megabits per second bit rate overall it's just happening to have to change it from hevc into h.264 but again nice and easy playback skippable we can move ahead of the buffer zone and CPU utilization barely at 10%. We might see a slight spike now we've skipped it forward so it has to catch up. But again, absolutely fine numbers. Cannot fault it and this 4K file gets a big old tick from me. And we're down to our last two files here. Uh, we're down now to Avengers Endgame, another IMAX trailer. This is an H.264 file and this is a 4K trailer at 24, megabits, um, 24 frames per second but a 40 megabits per second bit rate. We can move that down to the bottom there, playing natively. 
this is still a denser file there this is the densest um, h.264 file we've played there and you can definitely tell that cpu has um, kind of gone to the highest it has so far at 25 percent utilization but it's still played this mid-range 4k file for us here so it's still very promising indeed again we can skip forward make our way around this trailer a little bit we're going to see that delay there as we move along because again dense file that we're skipping back and forth between but still nonetheless great utilization with hard red transcoding the ds920 plus is still playing files like this very very well down to the last file the top gun maverick this is the 80 megabits per second file now again this is by no means the biggest file i have for 4k indeed as mentioned in the introduction if you didn't watch my previous videos when i was bench testing 4k the biggest file i was uh, looking at was a 400 megabits per second file so these 4k files are still infinitely higher than the one we are looking at there but still this is a big old file so i think it will play it but i think it'll have to work pretty hard to play an imax uhd trailer that's 10 bit 80 megabits per second mkv so let's go ahead let's open that up there on the bottom of the screen we're seeing it play. We're seeing a slight delay for that 80 megabits per second file. Again, this is the closest we've seen to a struggle from this so far. This is going to push this system hard. We're already seeing the CPU utilization make it into the 30s. It's now the hardest working file, and it may quit out on us. We may have seen our only failure of this testing, where 80 megabits is just that little bit too high. Again, for a little bit more information on this file, the file we're running here, it's a DTS HD, um, it's an unofficial mix, and again, the site is linked in the description there, with quite dense audio channels as well, and it's on that IMAX trailer too. So there's no shame in this file being the one that breaks the system. But for now, I think we may have to face facts that this NAS is going to struggle with this file. And we're even seeing my host utilization kind of dance all over the place, which may be something of a discerning factor. We're still not hitting too much, but with that utilization of OBS running in the background there, having its impact, we're going to have to at least include that in the handling. But the CPU there has still largely given up the ghost. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to call this one unsuccessful. We're still going to do that last conversion see what happens if we try to convert this file automatically and see if the system can use its reserves to change it but more likely it is the density of the audio stream that's caused something of a problem my system client recording hardware is a little bit of a factor but as you can see now we've converted the file the conversion of this file uh, again has changed things up uh, changed things up considerably there so it can play a file like this via conversion but still not enough that I would call it an absolute success there. And that's it. I'm going to wrap things up now. This has been my 4K Plex Media Server testing of this, the now two and a half years old Synology DS920+. Plus. Do let me know what you guys think in the comments. And again, I am going to be retesting several of the NASs uh, I have in the collection with these new media files and separate them from the old media testing. I'm still going to do the 1080p tests, but slowly but surely I'm going to move to these new upgraded tests for 4K as 4K is starting to become considerably more prevalent. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Look out for an article, links to all of the results that we've gone through today in the description. And once again, I do strongly recommend that you check out the other videos that I've done for more information on Plex testing on this very specific NAS because we've done a lot of tests with different kinds of media files, formats, compressions and codecs and I recommend you check them out. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to learn more, visit the guide in the description or the free advice section linked below and I will see you next time.